We often think of rationality as being like the hallmark of intelligence. But what most people don't realize is that rationality always tends to operate within an enclosed system. And it can only make deductions within this system. So if you think that rationality is the process of discovering truth, you may not realize the fact that it's only truth within that enclosed system. And understanding this aspect of rationality is actually really important for making the most use out of it. So what does that mean? Well, let's take this example. Take these two premises. Northern whites are often seen in Africa. Uganda is in Africa. The conclusion that should follow from this is that Northern whites are seen in Uganda. Now, do you see this conclusion as sound? Whether you do or don't can actually tell you which hemisphere of your brain you're using in order to come up with this judgment, as an experiment by Deglin and Kinsborn demonstrated. Now the premises they used in their experiment were slightly different, something involving a porcupine and a monkey, but this one essentially paints the same picture. The experiment involved using temporary hemisphere inactivations, so either the left or right hemispheres were inactivated. The researchers then presented the participants with this logic problem. The two premises are given, and then they are asked whether the conclusion that follows is true or false. When the left hemisphere is activated and the right hemisphere is inactivated, the participant almost always says yes. The conclusion is true based on the premises. But if you ask them, can the northern whites be seen in Africa, they know that they can't, and yet they're still saying that the conclusion is true. What happens instead when the left hemisphere is inactivated and the right hemisphere is activated? When the right hemisphere is activated instead, the participant almost always says no. Because even though the premises are written on the paper as such, it seems that the person is able to draw from prior experience and other past knowledge in order to realize that one premise isn't actually true. So even though the premises suggest that the Northern Whites can be seen in Uganda, the participant knows that the conclusion can't be true. This is the problem with the left hemisphere. It grounds itself in a kind of virtual world, and it operates within this virtual world and isolates it from the real world. And when you create this enclosed system and operate within it, you're sort of bound within this system. And being bound to the system, you have to conclude that the Northern Whites can be seen in Uganda. The right hemisphere, on the other hand, is able to transcend this imaginary system. It doesn't bound itself to what's written on the paper. It's able to transcend this imaginary system. And by doing so, it's able to draw information from outside the system. And this actually informs whether it thinks the conclusion is true or not. What's amazing is that this experiment can be carried out on the same participant. So first the left hemisphere is inactivated, and then the right hemisphere is inactivated, and the results still hold. This really goes to show that the left and right hemisphere should be treated as though they were like two different people. Because the same person could go from accepting the conclusion to rejecting the conclusion based on which part of their brain they were using. The sort of problem with the left hemisphere is summed up well by McGilchrist, who writes, in the left hemisphere situation, it prioritizes the system, regardless of experience. It stays within the system of signs. Truth for it is coherence, because for it there is no world beyond, no other, nothing outside the mind to correspond with. In other words, this imaginary world that gets created by the premises becomes this kind of enclosed system, and truth has to be determined within that system. As I've said before, math is kind of like this. It's an enclosed system where you start off with these kind of fundamental axioms, and then you draw premises, or you draw conclusions rather, um, from the implications of those premises. So deductions and truth can be found, but it can only be found when you kind of make some fundamental assumptions. And that's very similar to the example that we did before. We kind of make some assumptions assumptions and then we try to find out if these assumptions are true, what else is true? The problem is, is that we can never really go back and check whether the assumptions are true. We just kind of have to assume them and then carry forward from there. This is again why I refer to the right hemisphere as transcendent. It's able to draw from more experience and tell you whether those premises are true or not. The left hemisphere seems rather incapable of this. It seems that it prefers to be bound within that system. But that system, again, is always self-referential. And math and rationality are very useful, clearly, but we always have to be aware of the fact that they kind of have these fundamental limitations. And many people who claim to be rational aren't aware of the fact that rationality has this fundamental flaw. So again, we shouldn't discard rationality, but it's really important that we understand what it is and how to use it. Because whenever we deliberately close a system and create this virtual world, we run the risk of kind of acting like this virtual world reflects the real world, when in reality, um, it's very possible that the virtual world we create is uh, you know, unreflective of reality. Very oftentimes what we need to understand the world, which is very complex and multifaceted, is not to enclose the world picture, but to transcend it. And I discussed that a lot more in this video, which I'll put up here, up here, up here. I think it'll be up here. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, thanks for watching. Have a good day and may good luck always come your way.